Opalus. Flaming Opalus. Ah, at last a customer. What can I get you, Julia? Um, I've just come to see if it's true. What? That Bell Simpson's done a moonlight flit. Oh, yeah. It's true. Left me right in it. Between her and Bing Crosby, they stitched me up like a kipper. Oh, well, just do remember, Ron Dixon, that there's always someone worse off than yourself. Like who? Your Jackie, for one. Yeah. Yeah, well... Look at you. Fighting fit. Your own house, fresh car, money in the bank, and still all your own hair and teeth. Haven't you? Uh, yes, yes, I have. Just about. There you go, then. There's millions of people would get the right legs to be in your shoes. Yeah, well, thank you, Julia. I feel much better now. Oh, um, shopping, can you do a bit today? No. Nope. Why would have time? Problem, then? Well, then can you be here at least for tea with Dan? I'll be late. No, because I'm going to be even later. Um, can I ask why? Simple. Because two of the country's most boring authors are coming in to sign their very boring books, and I have to hover and smile. Well, somebody's got to be here for Dan. I'm going to be in a warehouse near Warrington looking at the product range I'll be dealing with. Now, is it a problem? No, not at all. Well, I better get going. I've got a busy day. Holly, will you wait? This is ridiculous. Yes, it is. Well, why are you going out of your way to make things as difficult as possible for me? Because I'm wondering how we're supposed to get back together, or even pretend to make this marriage work, at least for Danny's sake, when you're piddling about looking at pesto. That's assuming that what happened last time you went away on a business trip doesn't happen again. A bit on the side and then the sack. Supermarket oh, manager that's assistant were depositing a day's takings in a night safe when they were attacked by Yeah. Okay, glad you're ready. What for? Me and Elaine have got to get over to the shop. Got a load of gear due for delivery. How do you think I'm gonna lend a hand? No, but I thought we could get you downstairs before we get off. Oh, no, Mick. Don't bother. I'll be all right. That's no bother. Come on, give it a lift. Mick, no, I'm staying here. If I go downstairs, I'll never be able to get back up again, not on my own. So, I'll be home at dinner time, then I can ring you back up. No, I'm better off up here, love. Hey, what do you tell her? I can't tell her anything. I never have. Look, the time's come to decide downstairs or up here. I think I could get used to this little room. <sighs> OK, you win. He's as pig-headed as me, him, nearly. Are you sure about this, Mum? Certain. At least I can pay in privacy up here. Now, go on, clear off, get your delivery sorted. Ooh. Oh! <coughs> I'll tell you what. At least let's give a review. What do you reckon? Now you're talking. Let's be having you. Come here. Ooh! Uh -oh. A few pounds on you, <laughs> Smash it. You can do this any time you fancy. See, now you can watch the world go by. The world? From here? Well, as much as I need of this anyway. <laughs> this is a good idea, Mick. Lovely. Yeah. Hey, I could even take up bird watching. <laughs> hey, things are livening up already. <laughs> See you later. Hey, love, you should in the kitchen. Go on through. Mm -hmm. The office is out of the cell. Oh, Jackie. How are you, love? Oh, I'm all right, thanks, Julia. I popped into the salon for you this morning to make sure everything was ticking over all right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what would you do without me, eh, love? <laughs> Um, should we go inside, Casey? Yeah, come on. Got it? Yeah. You are going to be all right, aren't you, Jackie, love? All right, Julia, I'm not deaf. Careful, not. Oh, yeah. 
Got it. Go on, in you go. Can you manage? Yeah, yeah. Katie! She is going to be all right, is she? Could she see me? I couldn't tell. Yeah, it just takes a bit of getting used to, that's all. Now, Katie, tell me everything the doctor said. Katie! Is she home yet? Yeah, she's in there. She should have phoned me. Katie? No, love, it's me. Dad, I oh, didn't realise. Jackie, I made up your own love, but why didn't you ring me? I had a picture up from the hospital. Dad, I can look after myself. I don't need you chauffeuring me everywhere. Yeah, all right, all right. But look, now you are home, we need to sort ourselves out, OK? Now, look, I can't do much of the salon, but... No, Dad. Jack, I just thought... Dad, no. I've told you, I don't need any help. And you should be worrying about your own business, not mine. How's the trading post doing? Any better? To be honest with you, love, it couldn't be worse. It's dying on its feet. Well, isn't there any chance of you keeping it open? I don't know, Jack. The way things are going, I reckon I'm flogging a dead horse. God! She got me here, house bricks. Susanna, I'm sure you want all four cases bringing down? You take as many suitcases as you like, love. You deserve them. Thanks, Julia. Looks beautiful, mm -hmm. doesn't it? I just wish I was more sure. Look, it'll do you good to get away, I've told you. Oh, I know, but the idea of enjoying something again... <laughs> I, I feel I shouldn't let myself. Well, you should. You should. How about you? Where to go at the new job? Well, I was. Until Ollie let me know what he thinks about it. No, how do you mean? Well, I think he thinks I should just stay at the trading post. Oh, that's ridiculous. I know. I told him that. But I think he's still terribly worried about Matt and Georgia. And actually, he's jealous. Oh, typical man. So, there you go. There's four suitcases and uh, three of them are yours. I know that, Max. And you're absolutely certain that you need three very large suitcases for just two weeks? Certain. Oh, and the vanity case, don't forget that. Uh, of course. Of course, the vanity case. I mean, how could I be so stupid as to forget the vanity case? What up for some, eh? Sorry? Could have done with a flood at my place. Nice little insurance check and all yeah. that. Are you any news about your Jack here? Oh, yeah, she's back home now. Everything hunky dory, she reckons. That's good, isn't it? Eh? At least someone's having a bit of good luck. Yeah, but you'll soon have your job back here with Mick, won't you? I don't know, Rob. That's what I'm trying to find out. Yeah, he's always going to want staff in a chippy. Mind you, I suppose he'll have a lane working here and all, won't he? Mm hmm. Don't suppose eh, you've got any jobs going, have you? Me? You're joking, aren't you, love? I wish I did have. <laughs> Cass. I know. You know what? The job's gone, hasn't it? Every penny that's due to you is in there. Plus a couple of weeks' holiday money. Sorry, love. Sorry you didn't tell me sooner. Give me a chance to find something. Yeah, well, I didn't want to admit it to myself, did I? Kept open things and pick up. Then if they do, you're top of the list, honest. Do you want me to stay till the end of the shift? No. No, it's all right, love. You get off. Do something worthwhile. Go and visit your mum. I think things will ever pick up for shops like this. <sighs> Stranger things have happened. So you believe in miracles? I've got to. Anyway, I'll decide tonight. No miracle. No shop. Yeah, well. Good luck. You'll need it. Me, 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 Dad have done nothing since you closed down. 
I put a sign on, I'm skinned. So is my dad as well. Look, we will do anything. Chop and spud, serve and scrub and clothes. Oh, Lens. Please, Mick. Lens, we're not even open yet. We're not even sure what's happening. There probably will be work for you. Oh, I don't believe this. What? Did you sign for this lot? Yeah, why? Look, Mick, For 12 packs. Yeah. Oh, there's only 11 here. What? Oh, we're gonna have to get on to them. Me. Uh, Lens, I know. Look, I've got you in mind and you're our fella, but not just now, eh? Yeah. One, two. Well, I hope you and Ollie have worked something out by the time we get back. Mm. Give him hell. I will. Let that holiday do you good. Mm. If we ever get off. Oh, you will. Mm. Have a great time. Bye, Belle. Bye, Max. Bye. What if you've put them on the oh, back? Please, not now. Oh. Right. Right. Ah. <laughs> Packed up now, Mrs. Barnham. Thanks, Julia. And you don't have to worry, he's going to a very good home. Who is? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Right. Well, enjoy yourselves, won't you? So, Arlo. Poor Em. Gave us such a hard time over that rabbit. Yeah. Oh, well, we all ready? <laughs> yeah, as ready as we'll ever be. I mean, I still say this is a ridiculous amount of luggage. Well, it is. What are you grinning about? You. You're annoyed with me and you're not trying to hide it. I think it's a good sign. Oh. Come on, Max Holiday. All I need is three customers by the end of the day. Just three. Please. All right, all right. No rush. <laughs> There's plenty of time. Wakey, wakey! We've got a surprise for you, so close your eyes. The way are closed. Oh, go on then. Well? Oh, my God. Isn't he gorgeous? Um, he's gorgeous now because he's white. Oh, that's original. And he's ever so friendly. And slightly smelly. You can shampoo him. He doesn't mind, Miss Brogan said. And everybody loves him. Don't the Gemma love? Well, I do. Yeah, well, I'd love to say it's just what I always wanted, Julia, but it's not. Don't be daft. It's not for you. It's for little Gemma here. Oh, oh well, that's different. You take him downstairs, eh, Gem? Give him a bit of lettuce or something. OK. Come on, Snowy. Can't wait for our Mick and Elaine to come in. We're going to be dead chuffed we've got a rabbit. <laughs> Oh, 
Who is he? It's me, Jack. Ben. You okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm great. He's coming. Ta. Ben, can I just say straight off, thanks a lot for what he did. What for? For what he did when I was attacked. No problem, just glad I could help. So what do you think of the shades then? Jackie O'Nax is all what? You look great, Jackie. I feel it. I can't wait to get back to work. Yeah? So you're okay then? Um, do you want a coffee? I'm not sure if there's any milk, but... No, no, you're right. I just had one before I came out. So what did they say then? The medics? Oh, not much. Just that it'd take a bit of time to heal. I just have to wait, really. That's good news, then. It is, yeah. I, uh, bought you some flowers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I meant to say, they're lovely. I mean, it should be me buying presents for you. Don't be soft. Thanks. I'll put them in some water later on. So how are they, then? Your eyes? Oh, they're not bad considering. Um, are you sure you don't want a drink? No, you're all right. Jack, you know when Leanne attacked you, I just asked if you wanted to go out somewhere. Well, I didn't get an answer. Hey, me. Sorry it took so long. Couldn't decide what to get. Oh, hiya. Hiya. Yeah. I've just got to go and do something. So what do you reckon? No. I don't think so. Why? Thought we got on really well. We do, but I don't know. It's just not the right time. It isn't you, it's me. I'm just too busy, Ben. I can't think of anything but work at the moment. But maybe things will be different in a few months' time. Right. OK. I'm sorry. Doesn't matter. I'd better get off, then. Right, son. Thanks again. It's OK. See you, Jack. Look after yourself. Yeah, see ya. Okay. Yeah. Fine. No problem. In the milk, cause there wasn't any. I realised that. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. So, uh, any plans for tomorrow then? For today, you mean? I'm gonna look in at the salon and then check out the cafe bar, see what everything's up to. <sighs> Casey, do you want my opinion? Probably not. But let Peter look after the salon. Let your dad or Mike look after Bar Brookie. You're joking, aren't you? Otherwise, you're just sailing there until everyone that isn't a problem. That isn't. They won't believe you. Not once they see you, Jack. Look, I'd know my way around the salon and the cafe bar blindfolded. <sighs> Till somebody moves a chair and doesn't tell you. Look, Casey, I've got to be all right. If people think I've got any kind of weak and I still take advantage, especially at Bar Brookie, I'm the licensee. I've got to be on the premises. And what if JC found out? What do you think he'd say? He just wants someone that can't see properly running the place. I have to pretend that everything's all right. Here you are, love. Oh, thanks, Julia. Now then, I've been thinking, where are we going to go for our next little jaunt when you're feeling better? I don't think I'll be going anywhere anymore, Julia. Oh, no, I ain't now. Come on, love. Well, I won't be, so I fool myself. Do you know, I've been watching people come and go all day today. And a few of them look quite chirpy. But most of them looked so sad. Even miserable. And I thought, well, none of you are dying. Why can't you enjoy the life you've got? Make the most of it while you still can. Dying? Yeah. Might as well face it, love. Stuff stinks. Nearly finished now. Do you want me to do yours? I'm not going to be able to do them myself, am I? So, what did Ben want? Not much. Yeah, just came round to drop off some flowers, did he? 
Oh, oh. I can't see what the problem is. What problem? Well, he fancies you and you obviously fancy him, so why not go out with him? Because? Because what? I don't want anyone's pissy, that's <laughs> why. Do you think pissy's what he had in mind? Look, Casey, it's all very well you sitting there and telling me how easy everything is. No. But just put yourself in my position. I mean, what if time doesn't heal? Oh, don't be soft. What if I never see properly again? But, Jackie, you said the doctor's... I know what I said. But that was just me, making it up as I go along. The doctor says it was too soon to know. Oh, Casey, what if my eyes never get better? What if this is it for the rest of my life? I'm scared, Casey. Oh. <laughs> I'm really scared. <laughs> Taste of the Orient turns sour for Sybil when a love-struck sumo wrestler muscles in on her Japanese adventure. Friday comedy starts next on four. racket going to go on. One of my best customers is getting a terrible head in there and I can't even hear myself think. Oh, Julia, I don't need the hassle. My lady's come here for a bit of pamping and relaxation, not to listen to World War Three. How long are they going to be working? Until I get a new suspended ceiling. I'm sorry. Well, that's not good, you know. I'm going to be losing customers. 
Oh, since when have you been in charge? Uh, all right, Carl, I'm coming. Look, look, I'm sorry, I've got to go talk to him. Julie, if you've got anything, please speak to Jeff. He's, he's in charge of the shops. Oh, aye, yeah. The poor girl's lying in bed with her eyes burnt away with acid. Oh, look, sorry, I'm very busy. You wouldn't get away with this if that poor girl wasn't lying in bed, made for life. Nick, can I have a word, mate? Hope you a minute, Carl. Got to the better, mate. It's up to me eyes, isn't it? Yeah, uh, you know that I've had to close the shop. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, man. Yeah, well, now I've got to get shot to be fittings, and uh, well, I just wondered if you'd want first refusal, you know. Discount for cash, no VAT, no messing. I'd love to, but it's not like good use. Look, I've got to get on, mate. Let's know if you change your mind. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Ron. Oh. Come to watch the last remains of the trading post go down the pan, have you? No, I missed you earlier, and I just wanted to say that, uh, well, I'm sorry it had to come to this. You know, the old trading post closing down after all these years. Yeah, well, it was a bit late now, isn't it? All right, Bing. Oh, hello, Mick. I've just been having a word with Ron. He's taking the closure of the shop very badly. Yeah, I know. He blames me for the whole thing, but the truth is that his business was failing long before I had anything to do with it yet. I don't know, he can't stand in the way of change, can he? Exactly. You know, it seems funny as to start new businesses. Well, right. poor old Ron is back in retirement. Huh? Mm. You seem to have your hands full in here. <laughs> oh, the war with the thing. Look, if there's anything I could do to help. Really? Yes, officially it's my day off, but I'm sure I could fit something in. Look, if you don't mind doing me a favour, I should have picked up Blood's prescription, but I just haven't had the time. I mean, if you really don't mind. No, not at all. It's my pleasure. How is she? She's a handful. Anyway, cheers for that thing. I'll see you later. Right. Well, I'll drop this into you then. Thanks a lot, mate. Are you, Dave? Julia. Hello. I was just wondering if you've heard from Mr. And Mrs. Farnham. Well, I had a phone call from Max last night, as a matter of fact. The hotel's very nice, the food's excellent, and they're having a splendid rest. Oh, I'm very glad to hear that after all they've been through. So am I. I, I just hope they come back a little happier. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll see you now. Yes, all right. Pike Court on Hotel Waters, June 1959, by Mr. F. Wainwright. Hmm. Maybe I should have brought that fly fishing gear I bought for Thomas. It's never ever been used. Maybe we should have gone to Sardinia. At least we know what the weather was going to be like without lugging this thing around. Just handing our key in. It's so quiet here. Star hardly much fun. I thought this was supposed to be a second honeymoon. Well, of course, it would have been nice to go back to Sardinia, but you can always have a nice honeymoon without going back to the original place. It depends who you're with. Always a romantic, always a cheapskate. This is hardly cheap. Mm, it's hardly romantic, though, is it? Mm. Anyway, what's the plan today, then? Well, I thought... A nice walk up the valley. Again? Well, I seem to remember that we did a lot of walking and swimming on our first honeymoon. Mm, well, that was because we were flat broke yeah. after the first week. Not broke now, are we? The most romantic thing you can come up with is a walk up the valley. Fresco lunch thrown in, eh? We are now, Rachel, you first. Ow, What a What you got, Ow! Why, you turned on my foot? Oh, I'm sorry, mate. Do you want me to kiss a petal for you? <laughs> No, I don't know. I'll leave that to you, eh, mate? Mike! All right, Mick. <sighs> Listen, mate, I've got a bit of a problem next door. Yeah? I need to sort an electrician so that the guys do me ceiling and carry on working. Can you manage without me for a couple of hours? Yeah, I suppose so. Listen, I could do some signs to keep you going till I get back. No, listen, mate, don't worry about it. I'll get ready to do some. I mean, if it's anything like last Tuesday, there'll be nobody in. Oh, nice one. I'll be back about uh, half one. No, listen, you take the rest of the day off, all right? Are you sure? You don't need to ring Jackie, but make sure first. No, no, it'll be OK. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, cheers, Mike. Nice sure. one. Oh, don't go into all this again. I've told you there's nothing between us. But you were messing around with him again. We were having a laugh. Mike's my mate. There's no need to get jealous every time another fella talks to me. I'm glad you do, though. <laughs> and if you look down there, you can just about see the roof of the hotel. 
Oh, it's a bit more luxurious than the place we stayed in on our first honeymoon. Oh, 12 years ago. Seems like five minutes have gone by. And sometimes it feels like a lifetime. It was a lifetime for Matthew and Emily. More than a lifetime. Don't get upset, please. No, I'm fine. Honestly. I thought coming away might help. You know, a break from all reminders of the children. That time in Sardinia. We had our whole lives ahead of us, didn't we? I had no idea what was going to happen. I don't mind being here. God, we've been through some stormy weather since our wedding day, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps if we'd foreseen the future, we wouldn't have bothered. Oh, I don't know. Well, there's a few things I, uh, I wouldn't do if I had the time again. Like starting something with Patricia. Yeah, that's the main one. And? And being honest, I suppose. I wish I wasn't so deceitful over all those years. What you were saying before about us being broke on a honeymoon, I even kept that a secret. <laughs> when you asked me if I had enough cash, I lied. <laughs> and all the time I had a bundle of lira in my makeup bag just in case. <laughs> I don't know why you ever wanted me back. You know why. Hmm. More exercise now? Oh, I think we can do a bit better than a walk. I know somewhere where we can go for a swim. Mm. But we haven't brought our costumes. Oh, you planned this, you devious swine! <laughs> Is that why we went swimming so much on our first honeymoon? No money. No. <laughs> <laughs> Two coffees and milk tables, heaven. Okay, I'm all right now. Yeah. Everything under control? Jackie, what are you doing here? I told you'd be off for weeks. Oh, our eyes are she all right? I can't hear you now. We can manage, Jack. Everything's fine. Good, I'm glad to hear it. She should be at home. Hey, I've had all the time off her knees, so how's it all going? Rach, where's that bag again? You're not running round after that lazy bloody... Rach! Jack, I didn't expect to see you here. Well, that's pretty obvious, isn't it? I was, uh, I was just having a bit of a blow, like. Christian, have you got any glasses that needs washing? Yeah. I'll leave them. Oh, Mike, will finish off. I thought I was supposed to be a relief manager. And when you've done that, you can go around the back and source out the bins. Yeah. I don't want to see a full bin in the whole place, all right? Well, all right, I'm doing it. And while you're at it, you're off the sand floor. You're all right, Jack? Yeah. I'm fine. God, Casey, I don't know if I can do this. I could hardly see a thing in there. Do you think they realised? No, yeah, you were terrific. Even I thought you were OK. Well, round one to me, then. As messy as I think it is. And guess what? I can't be as weird of it. Now what am I gonna do? That's what I'm here for. I'm your eyes, I'll read it all to you. Yeah, but there's the salon as well. I'll have to go through the books, I'll go and get them off pizza. What now? Yeah, I can't face plowing through this lot now. We'll do it later. Let's concentrate on what it seems to be good, are they? Convince some people I'm more race. <laughs> <laughs> it's freezing and we had a heart attack when we jumped in. Oh, well, brisk walk up the valley and then tonight we'll eat like horses. Oh, pretty we have to eat at the hotel. <sighs> it's June! Holiday time! Where is everybody? Yeah, it is quiet, isn't it? Well, I tell you what, we'll hit the high spots of town tonight and eat out. <laughs> Seconded. Ah, uh, beats the man in the cardigan with his thumb in the soup, doesn't it? <laughs> In about half an hour. At least Peter can be trusted to run the place on his own. Unlike someone I could mention. Oh, you've just missed Mr. Bradley on the phone. He's coming round in about half an hour. Oh, well, does he say what for? 
Well, he's heard about what happened and was wondering if you needed him to sort things out. So what did you tell him? Well, just that he started to work today. Nothing else? Well, that he seemed a bit tired. Why? Oh, it's all right. Thanks, Rach. I can't have him round here. I'll have to phone and put him off. What's wrong with him coming round? I don't want him seeing this backlog of work and me sitting here blind as a bat. He'll see through it even if that lot can't. I can't see the numbers. But I thought you said you could see better today. God, I can't even make a stupid phone call. Well, let's just do a test day. What? Well, we can test you every day, see if your eyes are improving. Yeah, come on. How many people are there behind the bar? Two. And who are they? Um, Christian and Rachel. It is, isn't it? No, it's uh, no, Mike and Rachel. I can't even recognise my own brother across the room. You'll have to dial JC's number for me. I can't risk him seeing me in this state. I don't understand, won't he? Casey, he's a businessman. My name might be over the door as the licensee, but how can I do the job when I'm half blind? He'll have me out if he sees me like this. I've got to stop him from coming. I'm sorry, I can't give you a delivery date until I know what I'm up to with the electricians and the tilers. Yeah, I'll let you know, Defo. OK, bye now. All right, Bing. Hello, Tom. I just bought this prescription round for you. Oh, cheers. Come on, mate. I should uh, keep these under lock and key, if I were you. What do you mean? Well, I couldn't help noticing that the script is for morphine sulfate tablets. That's a Class A drug, you know. Trouble in the wrong hands. Yeah, I'm glad this goes through them like that. It's just... Does she really? She must be in a lot of pain, poor woman. Sometimes even these aren't enough. The doc has to come out and give her a jab. That usually knocks her out. She's having diamorphine injections. I didn't realise it was that far advanced. Well, what's the difference between these and diamorphine? Diamorphine is heroin to the layman. Heroin? You mean smack, like druggies teeth? It happens to be the most effective painkiller available. You mean she could get addicted? In theory, yes, but it's very rare. I mean, the trick is to give the correct dosage and increase it at the right time, but just a word of advice, Mick. I wouldn't let it generally be known that you've got drugs like this in the house. Well, these aren't heroin, are they? Not quite as powerful, no, but just as attractive to people of the wrong kind, like... Uh, our friend Mr. Corkin across the way. Anyway, I better get going, so um, I'll see you later. Yeah, cheers, Ben. Bye. We're already living together. Why bother getting married? We just decided to. But it won't change anything, will it? You'd still be living yeah. together, shared in the same place. No, but it's like we. Well, Look, we might be living together, but we just wanted to show people how committed we are to each other. Didn't we, Rach? Yeah, that's right. But isn't it best to see how you get on for a bit? It's a lot easier getting out of living together than it is getting out of a marriage. We don't want to get out of it, that's the point. How about you, Rach? Is that what you think? Don't you think this is all a bit quick? We're not going to run off to Gretna Green on Saturday or anything. Probably have a long engagement, right, won't we? All right. Yeah. Did you manage to put him off? Yeah, thank God. He's leaving me to get on with him. All right, love. Uh, listen, I knew there was something I forgot to mention this morning. Yeah? Yeah, you know Mick Johnson's been struggling to get his chippy up by the end of the month. Well, he came in and asked me if he could extend it until the middle of July, and I said, uh, go ahead, you know, that's all right, now. Well, why didn't you tell me? I've just this minute been telling JC that everything's going as planned. I like that. Will you go and tell Mick I want to wear, please? Um, he's off today. Well, I thought yesterday was his day off. Why is he swapped? Well, he didn't. He's, uh, he's just having a few problems with the pizza place, so I let him take the day off. <sighs> I don't believe this. Are you stupid or what? I was only doing him a favour, Jack. Oh, and what about me? Is it doing me any favours losing business on lunches? What are you trying to do, you two? Make me bankrupt? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know, I think I'm getting to this stage where I can switch off. What about you? Hmm. We could sell up and move here. You could open a new restaurant. <laughs> In the country, you'd go mad after a month. 
probably. Chloe! <laughs> Gina, for one moment. Gina! I'm sorry to bother you, but I noticed you were staying at the same hotel as me. Oh, really? Yes, and I noticed you'd been down the valley. Did you happen to see a pair of kingfishers with their young? Oh, I'm afraid I wouldn't recognize them, even if I saw them. Oh, yes, you would. Well, once seen, never forgotten. Bright orange with a brilliant electric blue back. Well, they fly like arrows. Mm, sorry, no, we can't help you. Well, they've been nesting in that bank down there for donkey's years. Well, now, all of a sudden, not a sign. Well, maybe they've died out. I mean, they are quite rare. Well, not as rare as you might think. Well, especially now people are shaping themselves to do something about pollution. Though there's rather a scruffy farm up there. I wouldn't put it past him dumping slurry in the river. Oh, I hope not. We've been swimming in that lake. Well, some of these people just don't care. They live in the country and they take it for granted. Poisoning and spoiling. Well, I must go. Bye. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Friend of Bill Oddis? Ah, Twitcher. Oh, no, I've just had a thought. What? Well, she knew her at the lake and she had a pair of binoculars. <gasps> you don't think she saw us, you know, fooling around. You're losing your triumphs. <laughs> One scene, never forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think she'd be more interested in a family of kingfishers. Mm, electric blue backs fly like arrows. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> oh, it was a good idea coming on holiday. I don't feel as if you laugh like this in ages. We are there, Mech, over there. Mech? Hi, Jack. You all right? What's all this about you not reopening your shop till the middle of July? Yeah, no, I can't get everything done till then. I told you, I'll fill it. It's a pain, then. I know, and, well, you're not on. Come on, Jack, I can't get it all together before then. I mean, even mid-July, I'll be tight. Tough. There's all the businesses after your place, Mick. So you've got to be up and running by the end of the month, or we'll have to cancel your lease. But your dad said it was OK. It's not his business, though, is it, Mick? And it's not our Mike's, either. He doesn't make decisions on time off. All right, Jack, I'm up the wall. We're trying to get things sorted. I just need time. I'm sorry, but it's got to be the end of the month. End of story. I have to give him such a hard time. I can't let him think I'm a soft touch because of that cow, Leanne. Oh, let's just get him inside. I don't know why you let her talk to you like that. Can't you see? She's jealous. Who? Katie? And Jackie. They wouldn't be going on about just getting married if they weren't. <laughs> don't be daft. Look at them. When did you last see them with a fella, eh? They're on the shelf. <laughs> It's true. Why do you think they're knocking us for wanting to get married? It's because they haven't got the chance themselves, so they want the mate to back out. Oh, that's mad. <sighs> I just hate them going on at you all the time, that's all. Christian, they're not. <sighs> Rach, have you gone off the idea of getting married? No, of course not. Have you gone off me? Christian, what are you on about? I feel just the same way as you do. I'm dying for us to get married. I just thought, well, you know, would you not want to set a date? Well, let's set one then. What about next year? <sighs> I'm gonna be with you now. Oh, but you are! Oh, weddings take ages to organise. <sighs> Please, Rach. I just want everybody to know how much we really love each other. Let's do it as soon as we can, eh? Here we are. Please let me help. I don't need your help. I don't know what you're doing here, anyway. Guilt, probably. Ron, you gave me a roof over my head. I can't forget that. Yeah, no right mug I wasn't at all, wasn't I, eh? Talk about a cuckoo in the nest. Why don't you let me take all this stock off your hands and sell it over the way? That would help, surely. You what? I'd have to check with head office. I'll make a profit out of my failure. Oh, for goodness sake. It was sake. you who put me out of business in the first place, remember? Ron. I've told you, I don't want your help. I just can't stand seeing you so bitter. And the last thing I want is for you to be unemployed. Look, what I said to you the other day about working in the garage, won't you consider it? Not until hell freezes over. How many times have I got to tell you I don't want charity? It's not charity, Ron. It's a genuine job offer. And I don't want job offers, thank you very much, especially off the likes of you. 
Anyway, I'm already fixed up. You found something? Never lost it, mate. Never lost it. Why do you think I'm packing all this stuff away? Hey, look, just because I've lost this shop, don't you think for one minute that's it? I'll just do what I did when I was made redundant before. I shall get up off my backside and start making money off my own bat. As from tomorrow, Ron Dicko's Moby is going to be back on the estates. Good start. Ron, you can't be serious, surely? Too right I am. Listen, nobody is grinding me down. The Kingfisher patrols out and about again. So what are you doing over there, spying on that poor woman? Actually, um, I've been thinking. Yes? I don't know whether you're ready to talk about such things. Try me. This might be a bit soon, but... This is really hard to say. Well, go on. Well, I was going to say... Do you think we should start thinking about having more children? Oh, Max. You are an idiot. What's wrong? You've had a vasectomy. How can we have more children? Ah. Oh. This might be the time to tell you. The day I went to the clinic, I didn't. I walked out. What? I didn't have it done. So, I still am able to have children. You didn't tell me. Oh, my God. I just couldn't face it. But things really have worked out for the best, haven't they? I mean, if you wanted to, we could start another family. Again. Where's the workers? They all strike? Snagging another job. 20 days I've got to get this place open and they've let me down. It's a nightmare, I'm telling you. I thought you'd had until the middle of July. Oh, I did. Well, that's what Rondico told me while the Jackie was in the Aussie. But now she's telling me I'm not on. Says she'll let it off to someone else if we're not ready in time. Well, can't you have a word with JC Bradley? He understands the building's trade. I'd love to, but I can't reach him. I've got to get this place finished by the end of this month or I'm out on my ear. Oh, flaming hell. I paid this lot five grand up front for a deep fat fright and they can't even answer the phone. Well, I had more time. Let's ring him. Well, listen, do you fancy your coffee? I'll nip back the shop. Oh, brilliant, cheers, then. Yeah, hello? Yes, yeah, sales, please. Thanks. Oh, gosh, it's 
that luck and love. <coughs> Susanna, listen. Susanna. There you go, mate. Two nice hot steaming mugs. What is it? All that money. I don't believe it. Tell me it's a bad dream, will you? What? What's happened? That firm in Manchester we ordered the fryer off. Reduced by two grand for a cash sale, it was. They've gone bust. Bankrupt. And you paid them up front? It was the last one they had in stock. It was reduced from seven to five. God, they must have seen me coming. Why didn't I realise? Well, they must still have the fryer there, must not I mean, you paid for it. It doesn't work like that, Sin. I mean, it's been impounded by the liquidator or something. If I wait around forever, I might get some cash back. I'm sorry, mate, I really am. <sighs> How much bad luck can you have, eh? <sighs> Everything I try turns to crap. We'll never be able to hold now. Hey, I could have done that. Mm, you can take over when we get married. Hey, no chance, mister. Anyway, you far better at it than me. Um, have you thought any more about the wedding date? Well, yeah, but I've been thinking more about money and that. Why, what's that got to do with anything? A wedding's cost thousands. No, only if they big over the top white weddings with marquees on the lawn and all us throwing carriages and stuff like that. You don't want that, do you? No, nothing special, but you still have to save up. So why you get engaged in it? Why not get married and save up for things? I mean, we've got a head start having this place, haven't we? Mm, oh, I don't know. Don't you want to marry me? <laughs> yeah, of course Thanks. I do. But I haven't even spoke to my mum. She hasn't even met you yet. OK, let's go with the weekend. That soon? The sooner we meet her, the sooner we can get married. We can't go on now. Might as well forget the whole idea. Will you keep your voice down? I don't want my mum here. What am I going to say to her, eh? I've lost five grand of her money. I feel like such a fool. I should have sussed they were a dodgy outfit. Oh, stop blaming yourself. You went to know that firm would go bust. That's not going to get us our money back, is it? I am to blame. We need a plan of action. We'll talk to Jackie, get more time. If she's made her mind up that she's not going to give up, she's already got another tenant lined up if we can't make it. How much is it for a new one? Oh, I don't know. Seven, seven and a half grand. Then let's get a new one on credit. I'm not doing that. Why not? You know I feel about mortgages and loans and that. I lost the house once, and I got myself in deep trouble with some loan shark. Then we'll have to ask me mum. We can't. God knows what she'll think of me as it is. Wasting her money like some kind of idiot. I don't mind asking her. Yeah, well, I do, Elaine. She's done more than enough for us already. Look, why don't you go into town? See if you can raise a loan. I mean, go to banks and finance companies, not some backstreet moneylenders. Oh, I've got a clock in at the cuff. After work, then. Don't give up the fight before you've even started, Mick. Get your suit on and give it a go. Anything that you can raise will be a bonus, won't it? Yeah, I suppose so. Don't be a wimp like Ron Dixon and let it all slip away. Mick, if you really want this chippy, isn't it worth fighting for? Oh! What are you trying to prove here, Dad? I'm just trying to get rid of me stock, that's all. Yeah, and get one up on Bingo. Yeah, well, I'd sooner burn the lot of it than let him cash in. Aye, aye, the Moby rides again, eh? For the present, yes. I'm just trying to get one up on Bingo. And sell what's left of me stock. Right. And you're getting a little bit too old for this paper. Yeah, well, you know what they say, don't you, Sinbad? No rest for the wicked. Mm. Listen, I was quite happy ticking over till that bell one decides to desert me. You got a fella start at that garage. You know the cheeky get only wanted me to sell him what was left of me stock so he could flog it off over the road. Ron, shall I fetch young Timothy over to give you a hand? I can manage, thank you. 
Yes, it's all very well, but with your medical history, you know, carrying heavy boxes and everything. Look, I don't need your help. All your advice, thank you very much. Well, there's no angle. He has got a point there, you know, the old strawberry tart and all that. And the same goes for you, Christian Barnard. Yeah, Dad, that's the last of that pile. Thank you. Right, gentlemen, if you'll excuse me, I am off. I'm going to do a bit of good old-fashioned community shopkeeping. Why doesn't he just give up and retire properly? It's easier said than done, though, Bing. I mean, look at you. My business is viable, Sinbad. Fuel pump again. I'm gonna to have to phone a mechanic and get him out here. Why don't you just phone the scrapyard and be done with it, eh? Over my dead body. Cooey! Hello again. Are you enjoying your holiday? You, uh, haven't by any chance seen my wife, have you? Have you lost her? Oh, I, um, I overslept, uh, and when I woke, she wasn't there. The old chap at the hotel, uh, Martin, he said he hadn't seen her. Well, the man's three sheets to the wind half the time. Well, she's probably just gone for a walk. Well, there's some very good walks around here, you know. Well, she would have told me. You look so anxious. Where has she taken your wallet with her? Oh, sit down, for heaven's sake. I'm sure she's big enough and old enough to look after herself for half an hour. It's not that simple. Oh, I see. Well, yes, um... No. We came here to get away from... Cut a long story short. We lost our children two months ago in a road accident. Oh, I'm so sorry. Susanna was driving at the time, and she blamed herself. So much so that a couple of weeks ago, she even tried to take her own life. And you think she might try again? Well, the last few days, she's been fine. She's been happy and relaxed. And last night, we even talked about the possibility of having more children. But... Come on. Let's go. Go to. The same place I went when I wanted to do myself in. Here, Dad. Thanks, son. Half the day's gonna be gone with this fella. I well, hope he's not even worth what he's gonna charge, you know. I'm taking that thing out on the estates if it kills me. Yeah, and what if it does? You've got a bad heart, remember? Well, don't you start, Marley. I'm fit enough to work if I want. Yeah, well, don't blame me if you have another heart attack. Just leave it some, will you? Please. Any joy, mate? He's just spilling out the hours now, I'm telling you. Hi. Aye, aye. I'd watch myself with that one if I were you. She looks like a VAT inspector. Do you reckon, yeah? Do you know when Jackie's due back from her hospital appointment? I'm not sure. Why? I'm Eleanor Kitson, your sister's solicitor. I'd arranged to meet you here to discuss the incident with her eyes. Right. Are you the one who's going to prosecute that little cow? <laughs> Actually, I was going to discuss Jacqueline's claim for compensation. Right. So, if I could wait a while? Yeah, yeah, sure, my pleasure. Um, you can wait in the office, you shouldn't be that long. Hi, Dad. Dan, what are you doing home? We've got to start our work experience tomorrow, so I've got the afternoon off to prepare. But it seems as you won't let me go to Nat and George's, so I'm the only one who hasn't got a placement. Has Mum phoned about the office job? Um, I don't know, I've just got back. Oh. Are you really interested in some dreary insurance office? Do I have a choice? Oh, I can fix you up with a shop, no problem. <laughs> no, thanks. Why not? 
Because to be honest, that's just as boring. If you'd let me go to Nat and George's, at least that would have been interesting. I'm sorry about this. Jackie should have been back by now. I can wait another few minutes. Can I buy you a drink? I think I'll go and sit in the car. I have a few calls to make anyway. I will use this phone, no problem, you know. They're rather confidential. You didn't tell me you were coming home this afternoon. I know, it's all a bit sudden, but I've got to go down to London. I'll be back Friday evening. All right. I thought I'd have a few hours in the garden. Hello, darling. What are you doing here? I've got the afternoon off to prepare for my work experience. Oh, I can't wait. I nearly forgot. I spoke to Marion Fellow. She can give you two weeks at her place. The insurance office? Do I have to? Well, you know, it's very good of her. Where else could you find at such short notice? I had somewhere sorted. Remember. That's not even an option, Dan. Anyway, she wants you there at 2 o'clock tomorrow, just after lunch. I think you should give her a ring and confirm it. Surely I could find something else. Just go and ring. <sighs> Two weeks of non-stop excitement coming up. Not much further. We're not far now. Well, look, I tell you what. Why don't you tell me where it is and then I can go on ahead on my own? Problem solved. Look. Oh, my God. Susanna? You're up at last. Come and join me. I'd rather that you moved away from the edge. But you'd grab me if I'd gone to jump. That's why you thought I was up here, wasn't it? I have no intention of harming myself. I didn't mean to worry you. I just wanted time to myself. That's all. Any word from your sister? No, she hasn't phoned yet. Um, look, why don't we have a drink? I'm sure she's not going to be that long, though. Oh, yeah, OK, just a quick one. What would you like? Oh, uh... I can recommend the house red. Australian. Thanks. Yeah, that'll be fine. A uh, glass of house red and a bottle of pills for me, please, Christian. You pay an I'll stick a note in the till. Stick a note in the till, will you? So, uh, would I you... I just read that book you've got there. Really? Frightening, isn't it? Well, I'm only up to page 22, but... Yes, it is rather. The background he came from was awful. Uh, excuse me. What made you choose a book like this? I'm a solicitor, specialising in criminal law. Mind you, I haven't had a client on a murder charge yet. Have you? Uh, no. Oh, I see. No, no I manage Elton's bookshop in town, so I have to read quite a lot. And sit around in bars drinking wine while you do it. Yeah, yeah, it's a hard life. <laughs> I wish. Actually, um, it's my afternoon off. Are you a friend of Mike's? Oh, no, I'm acting for his sister. We had an appointment, but she's been delayed at the hospital. Oh, oh I see. Actually, as you're in the business, do you mind if I pick your brains? Uh, no, of course. There's a book I've been after for a while now about business fraud. A friend of mine told me about it. The title has something to do with a banquet. Um, was it American? Yeah. The Wall Street Banquet? Yeah, that's it. I meant to get it, but I never got round to it. Yes, it was published sometime after Christmas, but I'm not sure we've still got it in stock. I could order it for you, if you like. Would you? I never get a chance to catch up on stuff like that. Uh, yeah, sure. How can I contact you? Oh. Hi. Any word from Jackie? Yes, yeah, she's just phoned. She won't be back till four. Oh, I see. Oh, well, I'll have to call her. Maybe a drink in here next Wednesday? Yeah. I should have tracked it down by then. 
Oh, sorry. Hello, Ellen Nikitson. Was all that about? Yeah. Back back. Oh, I'm just tracking a book down okay. for her. Right. Well, I'm just leaving now. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Judy Cole's got to fly. Tell Jackie I'll give her a call. Bye and thanks. Bye. Thanks a bunch, mate. Sorry? For moving in on her. I had everything boxed off there. <laughs> Not so funny. That lady does not live in the same fantasy world as you, Mike. In your terms, you've got no chance, pal. I know I'm a coward, but I just couldn't go through with it. Just leave it, Matt. I meant to tell you honestly, but the accident happened, and then what with everything we've been through and us not having had... Well, I just didn't give it a second thought until last night. Well, it's just like you, isn't it, Max? I'll have it done as soon as I get back. I, I promise. If that's what you want. Oh. Well, that is what you want, isn't it? No. Isn't it? I... I don't know. You not having the operation, well, changes everything, doesn't it? Tell Simbad about our news. Why, yeah. what's this? We've decided we don't want a long engagement after all. We're going to go down and see my mum first, though. But we want to do as soon as possible, don't we, Rach? Do you reckon on July the 26th? What? You're joking, aren't you? I mean, that's only about, about six weeks away. I mean, what happened to all this getting to know each other? How would you let us walk in into that, mate? Only six weeks till you start your life sentence, eh? Are you sure about this? I mean, you haven't got any money saved up or anything. We don't need money, it's just going to be a dead simple wedding. And I mean, we don't have to worry about having to look for somewhere to live. It's all through, you have me, right? Yeah. Hey, it'd be nice if Simba give you away, wouldn't it? Me? Don't you think so? Well, yeah. All you got to do, mate, is get your suit cleaned. Well, I'll work on that, Chris. <laughs> yeah. In six weeks, that's going to fly, you know. Well, we don't know yet. It might not be as soon as that. I thought you just named the day. I still got to see me mum. Well, she like Christian, I'm sure she will. Yeah. Ah, Simba. Hello there. Rachel, I think I'll have a cappuccino and a slice of your excellent cheesecake, please. Hey, Bing, you've heard the news. These two are getting spliced next month, and I'm giving the bride away. Next month? Oh, congratulations. Well, i better get off. I'll see you later, mate. What do you think of that, eh, mate? This is a little sudden, isn't it? Don't worry, Mr Cosby. Simba's asked all the right questions. And uh, he's giving you away, is he? Oh, well, yeah. He did live with us for ages, and well, Ruth is my half-sister. I seem to remember that you lived with Mrs. Crosby and myself for quite a long time. But, uh, obviously that hasn't come very much. Oh, I, uh, I presume I am invited. Of course you are, Mr. Crosby. I never said anything about July. Yeah, but well, why not? I mean, we've got to get married. Might as well just go for it, don't you think? I suppose so, yeah. We could be hanging on for ages just trying to find a date that suits everybody. It's much better if we just do it. You're back. I said I wouldn't be long. I was going to make some tea. Would you like some? Not for me, thanks. What are you looking for? I had some of last winter's publisher's catalogues here somewhere. Ah. It's all a panic. I was talking to someone in the cafe bar. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we were chatting on, and she asked me to order a book for her. Oh, so you rush straight round here to try and track it down? Yeah, it's an order for the shop, and, well, as I remember it, quite an expensive one. Does she know that? Well, I shouldn't think she's too bothered. She's a solicitor. Mm. It must be in here somewhere. Very lucky solicitor, isn't she? Sorry? Well, she just flutters her eyelashes at you and you rush straight round here to do her bidding. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Well, you know, I just wish I had half as much success at getting you to do something for me. How does that sound, then? Rough. It's as knackered as you are. Don't you be at it, sunshine. There's life in the both of us yet, I'm telling you. And don't forget, I once earned enough to run a house and a family of five with that old thing. You're not going out there today, are you? 
Nah, I'll have to wait till tomorrow now. But rest assured, first thing in the morning, I shall be back on them estates to claim my birthright. Look, Dad, why don't you just sell your stock, sell the Moby, and retire like you wanted to do a couple of years ago? I can't, can I? I haven't got unlimited savings. Now the shop's gone, I've got to do something. Everything in working order? Huh? Sweet as a nut. Good, good. Can't you talk to him about this, Michael? I've tried, Bing. You know, I've offered him a job in the garage and to buy all the stock he had left over at the trading post. I heard, yeah, but, I mean, there's no way he's going to work for you. Not in a million years. The day of the mobile shop is gone. Well, if it hasn't, at least it's on his dying gasp. I do wish he'd forget all this nonsense and swallow his pride. No chance, mate. Tea in ten minutes, Mum. Hey, how'd you get on? What do you think? Oh, me. What chance did I have, eh? I'm a black man with no security. A rented house and the leftovers of a crappy little business. They wouldn't touch me with a barge pole. Did you ask for the 5,000 we lost or more? I asked for eight, but what's the use? They wouldn't lend me last night's echo. I felt so pathetic. And the look on their faces when I told them that I forked out five grand up front to a dodgy business. I didn't stand a chance, none at all. Maybe we could go somewhere else. Hey, I could come with you. Don't kid yourself, babe. The fact is, we're finished. That's it. Finished before we've even started. Don't say that, Mick. Elaine, we've got to accept it. We had the chance and I blew it. That's over. TV for addicts and chips to go. Welcome to Planet Showbiz, next on 4. Trying to borrow the money to make it up, but no chance, Glad. No security for the loan, see. What are you doing walking the streets to borrow money? Why didn't you come back to me? <laughs> Pass us my bag, look. No, no, you can't be giving us more. Do as you told, Elaine. Gladys, I'm sorry, we can't take any more off you. Not with me losing five grand. Then how'd you buy your equipment and all the rest of it? Oh, there's no point. There's no place for the small man anymore. That place should be a... Kentucky Fried Chicken or something. I mean, it just wasn't meant to be. Mick's right, Mum. We tried to take on too much. Well, what about all the work you've already done? You can't just give up. This isn't the Mick Johnson I know. Well, maybe I'm not cut out to run a business. I'll just have to find another chefing job or ask Jackie Dixon for more hours. But that's going backwards, when you should be looking forwards. You've got a wife and three kids to provide for now. You can't just give up. <sighs> We'll manage, Mum. I don't want you just managing, not when I've got thousands in the bank. I want to see you two in something of your own that you can work on together. Now, how much? But we can't take it, Glad. Treat it as my investment. You've been good to me, Mick. Why shouldn't I back you? Just the same as that Dixon girl being backed by that builder bloke. Now, how much do you need, Laney? Five thousand. I feel terrible about this, you know. Don't be so soft. All I'm doing is giving you some of your inheritance in advance. But what about your Cassie and Tanya? It's not fair on them. Well, I changed my will. So that all yous have had will come out of our Elaine's share. Now, there you are, son. I've signed it. Just fill it in yourself. I don't know what to say, you know, Glenn. But we are grateful. Oh, thanks, Mum. 
Well, don't just sit there. You've already lost time by the end of the month before you know it. Go on, get on with this. Oh, hello. What's with all the Lord's snooty gear, then? Not you as well. I had all that from Mr Crosby. Has your mother signed you up for eating, or is it your first day on the stock exchange? I've got a job in an insurance office in town. A job? You haven't even left school yet. I've got to do two weeks' work experience. Ah, oh, work experience. I remember my kids doing that. Waste of time, as far as I could see. You're going to be bored to death in an insurance office. Try telling my parents that. Yeah, the real life's out there, so I'm telling you. You should come out in the Moby with me. You'd meet real people, then with real problems. Pensioners, handicapped people, young mothers who haven't got a clue how they're going to survive, unemployed people who'll never have another job in their lives, and all miles away from the nearest shops. Now, that would be real work experience. Sounds great. Yeah, it would be. All right, then. You on? Hey, hang on, hang on. I was only saying, like... Yeah, well, it's going to be better than an insurance office. Right, let's go. Thanks. You know what I said earlier about having more children? <sighs> I was terrified to mention anything in case you go walk about again. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. I need to know what you want. Let's just enjoy our holiday, hmm? <coughs> Bird woman. She's coming this way. Hello. I thought you might like to know. I found my little family. Has your family come to join you? My kingfisher family. Oh. <laughs> Whereabouts are they? Oh, about half a mile away from their usual place. I managed to get a photo of the mother bird feeding the chicks on minnows. She's got seven this year, but that's the most since 1963. Very good. I shall write it all up in my journal this evening. And how are you enjoying your holiday, my dear? Very much, thank you. Good. This husband of yours is looking after you, is he? <sighs> yeah. Well, I must be off. I want to get the uh, film into the chemist. Seven chicks. Can you credit it? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if she actually has any family. Oh, she's wearing a wedding ring. I suppose we'll be the first to see those kingfisher snaps. She must come here every year looking for them. Mad. <gasps> Look, I don't want to keep going on about it. Well, don't. I want to go for a swim in that lake again. Such a nice day. Ow! Oh, be careful. <sighs> you sound just like that doctor or so. That's all he could yeah. say. Oh, don't be so crabby. Poor Mike's toss is hiding every time you come in. Yeah, well, he deserves it. You think he owned the place the way he swans about? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just so frustrated, I can't get anything done. Oh, you're doing fine. You just want to try being a bit more laid back? But how can I be? I mean, look at this lot. It's mounting up by the minute. I should be making a start on the VAT, but how can I when I'm blind as the flame on bat? No, I'll help you. It'd good for me to learn stuff like that. Hasn't your sight improved even a teeny bit? No. Well, let's do the test again, eh? Come on. Oh. See, Rachel. What you got in her hand? Um, a cup of coffee. Sorry, it's a slice of gato. <laughs> Great. Look, it was an easy enough mistake to make. No, it wasn't. I feel like I'm just not getting any better. It was bad as the day I came out of the hospital. Crossfit is on in a minute, Mum. Do you want me to turn telly on? Cass? What is it? Give us a hand, love. Come on. Back to bed. I could hardly get out the bath. Where does it hit? In my hip. And right across the bottom of me. Oh. I knew it might hurt climbing in and out the bath, so I took my tablets. But they haven't worked. Right. I'm going to call an ambulance. No, love. You're bad, Mum. You've got to go to hospital. No, just call Dr Miller. 
I need one of his magic chaps. I'll sit here. It's my own fault. I shouldn't have had a bath. Oh, where's the lumber? It's by the phone. Hurry up, love. The stock I used to carry them days, I tell you. I used to pride myself on never, ever being caught out. Whatever people wanted, anything, from cocktail sticks to sellotape, I added in the Moby. Tell you, anybody stuck for the old sage and onion Christmas Eve, Ron Dicko was your man. So, did you used to do this estate? Oh, oh, yeah, and four others. I used to travel as far as Highton and Bellevale. Five estates in all. Every street I stopped in, people could set their watches by me. They used to be queuing up, waiting. Well, didn't you have any of the shops? Well, not many, you know, and too far away from most people. These places were built to shift people out of the town just after the war, you see. Overspill? Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Overspill. They built houses, but they didn't build much else. That's why people relied on me. And the likes of me, you know. The mobile veg man, the mobile chippy. I was coining it in them days, I tell you. People couldn't wait to see me. So, uh, where have you all gone, then? Yeah, well, give them a chance, eh? I mean, we've only just started to set up. There you are. You spoke too soon. There goes your first customer of the day. Morning! You were saying? Yeah, but it's early days yet, early days. I mean, I haven't been round here for a few years, have I? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Dinner at eight, Markland. Well, paths keep crossing, don't they? Yeah. Uh, would you care to join us for a drink? Oh, I don't see why not. Markland, scotch, please. A large one. Mm. That should do the trick. I hope so. She was in terrible pain. She should sleep for a few hours now. Keep in touch. What will I do when she wakes up? What if the pain comes back? We'll just have to wait and see what happens. You know, I've discussed her going into hospital with your sister and her husband. My mum won't go. She hates hospitals. I realise that. I'm sure radiotherapy would help. She's really determined, you know. She won't have anything to do with it. I just thought you might like to discuss it with her again. All of you. As a family. You stay with her. I'll see myself out. Thanks, Doctor. Oh, just relax, Mum. It'll work in a minute. God, I hope so. Go sleep, Mum. It's ages since I've been there. Do you know it well? Well, my husband was there with the railways for a year. He was a surveyor. We had rooms in Bromborough on the Wirral. No, I was brought up in Hairsville. Well, where do you live now? In Didsbury, Manchester. Do you come here regularly? Every year since 1959. Always the first two weeks in June. Frederick and I had our honeymoon here. Really? His idea. He used to come here fishing, you see, before we married. I actually met him here when I was staying with a college friend. Oh, isn't that romantic? Oh, he is very romantic. Standing watching Frederick fishing. That stuffed pike in the lobby, he caught that on our honeymoon. Oh, yes, I've seen that. Mind you, he'd introduced me to my kingfishers. They hadn't been seen in living memory till our honeymoon, and I spotted them first. I saw it as a good omen for Frederick and me. Did your husband die recently? Oh, good heavens, no. He died four years after we married, in 1963. It happened here, while we were on holiday. Here? Oh, how awful for you. He drove up the valley to a small lake. Martland had told him it was full of big trout. <laughs> Frederick.
Frederick couldn't resist, and Martin went with him. Martin, of course, takes a bottle of whiskey. They drive back, drunk as monkeys, and Frederick crashed the car. He died instantly, and you'd have noticed Martin's limp. Oh, how dreadful. Why do you keep coming back? Well, the year after Frederick died, I thought it might help. I was very depressed, very, very low. And then I saw the kingfishers again, and I just kept coming back. You've no children? No. We had plans, but uh, now I've nobody now. Don't you get lonely up here? Oh, I'm pretty content. I don't expect anything of anybody, and nobody expects anything of me. Go straight up, Doctor. Thanks. It's not worked. She was only asleep a few minutes and the pain woke her up again. It's never been like this before. Why hasn't it worked? I'm afraid your condition's deteriorating, Mrs. Charlton. I'm going to have to contact the hospital to get you a bed. No, just give me another chap. We need you to be admitted so that we can do something about this pain. You want to be as comfortable as possible, don't you? I'm not going to... to hospital. I'll just go to my car and make a call. I'm not going. Where's Arlene and Mick? Go and get them. I'm not leaving here. Mum, you heard what the doctor said. You've got to go. Oh, they can help you properly there. So they just for discounts? Oh, they weren't having any, but I managed to wangle free installation, aren't I, clever? <laughs> That's Dr Miller's. Was it you this happened? No, he wasn't. What's happening, Doc? Fred, Mrs. Charlton's taken a turn for the worse. I've managed to get her a bed at Walton. Well, is she conscious? Yeah, but she's in a lot of pain. Don't let them take me in, Laney. I don't want to. The stage she's in, she's got to go. Mick, they want to take me into hospital. Don't let them, please. What's the problem, Doc? Why do you want her in the hospital? Her condition's obviously deteriorating. I'd like her to see a specialist and have her pain management properly assessed. It's only because I was getting in and out of the bath. If I don't do that, I'll be all right. Please, love, I want to stay here. Can't you just give her a stronger injection? That's right. Just give me a stronger dose. Sorry, I don't. Oh, surely you can up the injection by a bit. She's got to go to hospital. Administering these injections here is very hit and miss. I'd feel far better if she were admitted. Show me living well. In my bag, Mick. I don't need to see it, Mrs. Charlton. I understand your concerns, but it would really help if you came to hospital. I want to stay here. I don't want plugging into any machines. Oh, go on, Mum. It'll be for the best. No. We'll look after her here. I mean, if that's what she wants. You heard what the doctor said. You, how can you do this? You two aren't doctors. I'm staying here. That's an end to it. Mrs. Charlton. I take it you want me to cancel the ambulance and the bed? Yeah. Please. Right. I'll call back later. Oh! Don't you think we'd be better doing the rounds in the evening? Why? Well, we'd be more likely to get customers. You know, people who've forgotten things from the supermarket. Yeah, well, maybe you're right, but not tonight, eh, son? I've had enough as it is. It's all the same to you. I think I'll just carry on the way I am. Right, you get yourself off home now. I am knackered. Yeah, well, I, I can't go until you've signed the form. Hey? Well, it's just a proof to the school that I've been working. Can't you get your mother to sign it? Oh, well, it's got to be the employer. And, you know, it's been dead useful getting some real work experience. You can just sign it at the bottom. All right. Thanks, Mr. Dixon. And listen, first thing Monday, you get yourself back to that insurance office, do you? I can't do that. Why? Well, I've written mobile shop at the top of the form, and you've signed it now. Right then, I'll see you Monday. Bye. Hey, hang on. With... Jack? Jackie? Jackie, love, what are you doing? 
I was gonna walk home on my own, Dad, but I don't think I can. Come on, I'll walk home. <sighs> Thanks, Dad. Listen, you shouldn't be wandering around here on your own, you know. You could fall over and do yourself an injury. And so could you, messing about on that movie. Aren't you just past all that? Hey, do you mind? I'm doing a roaring trade and I'm enjoying it. Are oh, you? Yeah. yeah. I've, uh, I've shifted more in one day than I have in a whole week in that shop just lately. Anyway, how are you coping? <sighs> Not so good. Dad, do you think they'll ever get any better? Of course they will, love. You'd be as right as rain in no time, I'm telling you. You've... Well, you've just got to be a bit patient, that's all. Yeah. Come on the step. Good girl. Well, thanks for the drink. Yes, thanks. Oh, you're very welcome. Well, I must be off. Hilary, Max and I are eating here tonight. We wondered if you'd like to join us as a guest. You'd be very welcome. Well, I'd rather not, if you don't mind. Well, maybe tomorrow night. I'm afraid I make it a rule. You meet people here and form friendships. But they don't last. Well, first it's letters, then Christmas cards, then nothing. It was better to avoid disappointment from the start. Oh, well, that's that's a shame. Though, if you wanted to spoil me, you could make a donation to the society. Oh, uh, which society? The Royal Society for the Protection of Birds. I try to do my best for them. Oh, we'd love to, wouldn't we, Max? Mm. Thank you. Max. Oh, that's very kind of you. Well, I'll be off. Have a nice holiday. Well, I bet she's been pulling that stunt since 1959. Oh, don't be so mean, Max. Pity she wouldn't join us. I'd like to have found out more about her. With the paint she's in, she needs stronger injections, but the doc won't give her them. I mean, would it really interfere with her breathing? Well, it could. But only if the diamorphine wasn't properly administered. The right hands is perfectly safe. But you think she'd be better off in the hospital? Well, yes, I do, Mick, yes, because at least there her pain could be properly managed. God, what a mess. Couldn't you persuade her to go in? No, nah, no chance, Bing. She's cast iron on that. Mm -hmm. Well, all I can suggest is that you find another doctor who be prepared to give her a stronger dose at home. How long would that take? Forever, I suppose. Who knows? She really would be better off in hospital, old son. Well, cheers, Ben. How is she? Oh, she's sleeping at last. Do you think she should go in hospital? I mean, at least they should get proper care. Oh, she won't go, Mick. She's terrified of having to go on a dialysis machine or something like that. You know what she wants, don't you? She wants to stay here with us. I'm prepared to go along with that, whatever happens, aren't you? I'm not sure we're doing the right thing, though. But look how much she's helped us. We owe it to her to go along with whatever she wants. I hate seeing her in pain. Surely she went into hospital at we least... We owe it to her, Mick. I could end up like her. What? Staying in old, fusty country house hotels. No family, no children. No life. It's a bit pessimistic, isn't it? No, oh, she's made me think, though. I could so easily turn into someone like our Mrs. Wainwright. Especially if we split up. You died. Why should we split up? No intention of dying just yet. Lots of people who lose children split up. Are you suggesting you think we should? No. But it happens. Look at Bell and Ollie Simpson. <laughs> they haven't lost the children. In effect, they have. Ollie can hardly bear to talk about them. And look at their marriage. How much longer will that last? I thought I'd really upset you, you know. 
When I brought up the subject of children, you've been going quiet on me ever since I mentioned it. It's just I've been thinking. If we carry on like we have been doing, we could end up living in the past, just like Mrs. Wainwright. I don't want to live like that, Max. I want to follow our fate. Fate? It was fate that took Matthew and Emily from us. And it was fate that made you such a wimp you didn't have the guts to have the vasectomy. I'll have the operation, I promise you. No. No vasectomy. Let's take advantage of your continuing fertility. I want children, Max. I don't want to grow old without them. The show must go on, but not when you sink your teeth into Sybil's muffins. The understudy also rises, next on four. Channel 4, TV you can talk to your friends about. Is Ron Dixon doing honking his horn outside our house? Oh, he's, um... Looks like the child catcher from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. If you say so. Well, what does he want? He's coming to pick me up. You? Yeah. That is my work experience. What, that thing? Yeah, good, isn't it? Please, tell me you're joking, Daniel. No, I'm not joking. Do you really think we'd let you have your work experience driving round some council estate in that thing, that, that larder on wheels, that liability? Yeah, well, it's already arranged. Well, we arranged for you to go elsewhere. Well, I cancelled it. Mr Dixon's teaching me all the tricks of the trade and I'm increasing his profits. You can't just go making these important decisions behind our backs, you know, Dan. Yeah, well, I should be able to choose, shouldn't I? It's for my benefit, isn't oh, it? So you want to spend your adult years driving round in some mobile shop, do you? Of course not, but I'll learn more with Mr Dixon than I will making tea in some stupid office all day. Believe me, I've worked with Deadly Dixon, shopkeeper extraordinaire. Look, I've got to go. I've promised her I'm now and I can't go back on that. You're going nowhere. Oh, do I have to wait out here all day? Look, I'm sorry, Ron. I think there's been a bit of a misunderstanding. No, there hasn't. I'll see you later. Well, is that a problem, or what? You look very showbizy sat there in your shades, you know. Yeah, well, I don't feel very showbizy. But everyone just thinks I really love myself. Yeah, well, you do, don't you? Oh, very funny. How long are you going to wear them for? <sighs> Until my eyes are better. Good job, really. I can't put any makeup on them. I wouldn't want to scare the customers. Have you heard anything from Ben? No. Why should I have? No, I was just wondering, that's all. Yeah, well, he's probably lost interest after me knocking him back the other week. Yeah, well, you must be off your head, cos you fancied him like mad. Casey, the last thing I need just now is to start a relationship. I mean, what's the point of going out with someone who looks like a blair to me? Well, why do you need to see him? Be dark when you're in the bedroom anyway. Oh, pack it in. You don't suit being all pervy. Yeah, well, I just think he's dead nice, that's all. Well, you go out with him, then. He doesn't fancy me. Well, if he likes me that much, I'm sure it won't kill him to hang on for a bit. I should be back to normal soon. Oh, when's your next hospital appointment? I'm seeing a specialist this afternoon. I meant to ask if you'd come with me. 
Yeah, of course. I, I didn't think it'd be that soon. Well, it wouldn't have been. I'm going private. Since when? Since I decided that I'm going to get the best treatment I can afford. Stacey, yeah. Yeah, well, it's bound to be better to be paying for it, isn't it? And I don't want to take any risks. Well, I slept like a log last night. Oh, the pity didn't sound like one. What's that supposed to be? It took me ages to nod off with you snoring away like that. Well, you should have said something. Oh, it would have made any difference. I need to ask what you're thinking. Strange that you see reminders everywhere you look. The minute you're laughing, talking about something completely trivial in the next. Well, there's no reason why we shouldn't have more children of our own. That is if you really meant what you said last night. I did. I've thought about nothing else, to be honest. No. Neither have I. The sooner we start, the better. Neither of us is getting any younger. <laughs> Not quite past it yet. <laughs> no, but the longer we leave it, the greater the chances of something going wrong. Well, I don't suppose there's any point in hanging around. No. So what's on the agenda today, then? Well, I thought I'd take you out and about. But I don't suppose we'll be needing this if we're going to spend the rest of the day in our bedroom. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Dana, what do you think? Oh my God, Jimmy! I thought you were going for a trim, not a scalp. Oh, love, I'm on my new course. It's a new start, my new look. Okay? Mm, it'll grow on me, I suppose. No, it'll grow on me. Whatever you say. Right, I've got to get off to work. Oh, you sure you're up to it, love? Well, one of us has got to go to work. I don't have much choice, do I? Mm -hmm. Sooner Mick gets this new chippy of his up and running, the better. Oh, too right. I'm too old, you know, to be working this far into the pregnancy. It wasn't for all these bills. Love, I've told you, I don't want you worrying about bills. We'll manage, we always do. Well, how? We've only got my wages coming in and that won't be for very much longer. We've got Sinbad's rent to tide us over, haven't we? Yes, and how long's that gonna last, eh? I mean, things sound as if they're going really well between him and this Carmel one. What happens if he decides oh, to move in with it? Love, we only need to scrape through the next couple of weeks. Once Mick opens up, me and Lindsay are gonna be having a regular wage coming in, aren't we? I just wanted everything to be perfect for when the baby came. Now it looks like we're gonna be just as hard up as when our Lindsay and Jimmy were born. Love, something will turn up, I promise you. That baby is going to want the nothing. Fingers crossed we win the lottery, then. I've only got a week to go. See you after. <laughs> hey, I'm glad your mum and dad let you come out, you know. For a minute, I thought they were going to put their foot down. Well, I always get my own way in the end. They don't bother arguing, cos they know I'm going to win. Yeah, I'll bet you do. Do you know why I've stopped here? To get rid of the old stock. Apart from that clever dick. No. See that house over there? We used to live there before we were all poshing ourselves and moved to Brookside Close. 83 Branthwaite Crescent. Now, that's some memories of that place. See that room up there? The front room, that was a box room, that. That was our Jacqueline's. It's hard to imagine her being up there now with her doing so well for herself. That room there, that was the main bedroom, now. Mine and Dee Dee's. At least said about that, the better. Now Mike and Tony, they have bunk beds in the back. Our Tony had just be going up to 16 now. Those were the days. I don't think we're going to do much business here. We'd be better moving on to elsewhere. Yeah, well, let's uh, just hang on a minute and see, eh? I may be first hundred here. I've got some good feelings about this place. Don't hold your breath. There you are. Here's our first customer. All right, love, what can I get you? It's Jesse Holmes, isn't it? You know me. Ron Dixon used to live at 83. Oh, yeah. How are you, love? All right. Great. What can I get you? Bag of spuds, please. Bag of spuds for the lady, please. How much is that? 145, please. Thanks a lot. How are you keeping, all right? 
Yeah. Hey, listen, it's all right. I'll get my young assistant to Thanks. take it over for you. Don't want you doing yourself any damage, do we? Do us a favour, will you, Jess? Let the estate know Ron Dicko's back. I will. Ta-da, now. Sure. Right, ladies, what can I do for you? doing out of bed? Didn't you listen to a word the doctor said? You can't expect me to stay in bed all day. I'm not dead yet. I yeah, know, but you're not doing yourself any favours, are you? You'd think I was flying round the room on a trapeze the way you're going on. I'm only sat on a chair looking out the window. Yeah, well, never mind that. I think it's time you got straight back into bed, eh? I've only just sat down. Anyway, I want to stay here and watch out for the kids. They'll be back from school soon. OK, but then you're getting straight back into bed, do you hear me? I remember saying things like that to you, 25 years ago or more. Yeah, well, you're old enough to know better, aren't you? I used to say that and all. <laughs> all right, clever clogs, but this is on doctor's orders, OK? Here are three and two is five. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Ta-da now. Ta-da. Doesn't say anything in my contract about lugging potatoes around for pensioners. That's because you haven't got a contract. Here's me thinking it was going to be a doddle. Hey, I took £5.60 in that stop. Looks like things are picking up, eh? If it carries on like this, I'll soon shift all this gear. That woman asked me where the other fellow was. What other fella? Well, apparently there's been another mob around here. Looks like you're on somebody else's patch. Nah, I don't talk rubbish. That was the first, dear. Well, you said yourself you've not been here for nearly five years. Wouldn't be surprised if somebody else had taken over. Yeah, well, I'm back now, aren't I? Hey, this is my round and it always has been. So if anybody's got any smart ideas about muscling in, they've got Ron Dixon to answer to. Amy. Hey, mate. You two have been gallivantly, in a bit. Oh, I wish. I've just been down the hospital with some tests. All right, sir. How's it going? Um, sound. They said I'm nearly back to normal now. So can we still wear machines? Um, well, well, even though I can see fine, I'm still quite sore. The bright light really irritates them. You must be dead relieved, though. You must have thought you lost your sight for good. I mean, you're really lucky, you know. Yeah, I don't have to worry about that now, do I? Yeah, I'm glad to hear it. Let's hope that the one gets what's coming to her. Maybe a vicious little cow. <laughs> oh, listen, before I forget, uh, someone called in and left a message for you earlier. Oh, who was I? I've written it down there. Alma Kitson, who's that? It said you'd call in about five ish. If that was a problem, just phone her back. All oh, right, cheers, mate. See ya. Hey, it's that solicitor. Someone said she's dead good at getting people comp over criminal injuries. All right. Listen, Jack, why'd you have to lie? How do you mean? Well, tell him, Mick, that you're practically back to normal. I just don't want people feeling sorry for me or taking advantage of me. In any way I can get by, I'm not totally blind. There's no need for anyone in this place to know. I can manage. <sighs> yeah, I'm fine. Stupid thing shouldn't be left there. You're home early? Yes. So are you. I just popped back for half an hour. I've got to meet a rep from Cardiff at four. How long will you be? Shouldn't be long. A couple of hours at the most, why? No reason. Would you like some tea? No, thanks. Would you like to ask me how my day went? <laughs> how was your day? Oh, forget it. I was only trying to be civil, open up some sort of communication between us. Is there enough hot water for me to have a shower? I should think so. Why? I've got to go around to Barbrookie. What for? I'm meeting someone. Who? Eleanor. Who's Eleanor? I told you about her last week. Eleanor Kitson. She's the solicitor representing Jackie Dixon. Oh, yeah, the woman that you ordered the book for. Yeah, I haven't managed to get hold of it yet, so I'm just going to go around and let her know. Seems like a lot of bother just to tell her that you haven't got hold of it. Why don't you just phone her? I fancy a drink. Anyway, she's got a meeting with Jackie Dixon, so it's just as easy for me to have a meeting with her face to face. Hmm. Well, now you're having an affair. You're not serious, are you? Well, let me just put it another way. Would you like to be having an affair? <laughs> What's so funny? I just can't believe how childish you are. Just because I've struck up a friendship with another woman, you automatically assume I'm having an affair, start behaving like some jealous teenager. Well, what do you expect me to think when you go to so much trouble for somebody that you hardly know? 
Yeah. Well, you can rest assured that I am not having an affair, nor have I got the energy to start one. The last thing I need at the moment in my life is even more complications. I'm going for a shower. You want washing? There's a few things down there, love. Mom! We're up here, Tan! Hiya! Hiya, Mom! Hiya, Hiya. kids. Have you two had a good day at school? Same as usual. And what about my little Jim? How was your day? Please just put it up here. Ooh, let's see. Trying to tell me I've got a big nose. <laughs> hey, it's brilliant, it really is. Aren't you clever? I'm going to put it on the wall. It'll cheer me up. <laughs> right, come on, Mum. You did promise. Promise what? That you'd get back into bed once the kids got home. I wish you'd stop pushing me back into bed. I'm a grown woman, I'm capable of making my own decisions. Are you okay? I'll be fine. Just leave me here for a minute. Hey, I'll tell you what. Why don't you two do your nan a great big favour and go and make me a nice cup of tea? Okay. Right now. Oh, take this downstairs, my love. I hate them seeing me like this. <sighs> Come on, Mum. I hope you get into bed. No, Lainey, leave me. I couldn't move even if I wanted to. Oh God, is it that bad? Mum, why didn't you say anything? Do you want to get some of your tablets? I've already taken them. Excuse me, I'm looking for Jackie Dixon. Yeah, that's me. Oh, hi. Elena Kitson. Nice to meet you. Yeah, and you. And this is my friend, Casey. Pleased to meet you. Can I get you a drink? Oh, I'd love a black coffee, please. Popped in last week with the criminal injuries form. Did you get it? Yeah, thanks for that. And did you have a chance to have a look at it? Um, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you, okay? Do you mind if I knocked off in? I've had a lane on the form. My mum's taking the time for the worse. I had to get the doctor out. How are we for cover? We're all done. Just a few coffees now. Well, look, if you do need me, just give us a ring. Yeah, oh. okay. Cheers, Jack. Thanks. I'm sorry about that. No problem. Shall we go through it together then? With the last two people left on Earth. I think this holiday is exactly what we needed. Mm. Time on our own. Planning for the future, starting a new family. Mm. You know the only problem with trying for a baby, though? What? Well, it might take more than one attempt to get it right. Oh, yes. You better keep practicing then. Mm. Oh, charming. Well, if that's how you feel. Maybe we should wait for a while and see if we've been successful. Well, I would prefer that, of course. It's just one problem. What's that? I haven't got the patience. <laughs> Glad you're okay. I got it as soon as I could. There's no need for that, love. Where's yeah. the doctor? God knows. What is it? Glad the breakthrough pain? Yeah. I told her to stay in bed, but she wouldn't listen. Will you please not talk about me like I'm not here? Oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, what's the point of staying in bed? The pain's getting worse even when I don't do anything. It's just the disease progressing. It's as simple as that. Oh, that'll be him now. Hey, hey. Just hang in there, Glad. I'll soon saw you out. Yeah. That's that, then. They want to know everything, don't they? Yes, they're incredibly thorough. I suppose they have to be. They must receive so many false claims. So what happens now? Well, now we've got this form sorted out, I can contact the Criminal Injuries Board. I'm afraid it's going to take quite a while. Oh, well. Thanks for all your help, anyway. No problem. Anyway, I'd better be going. 
Nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm you. I'll give you a call as soon as there's any news. Okay, thanks. Bye. Bye. Hi. Oh, hello. You ain't talking to Ollie Simpson. Who? Isn't that Eleanor one? Who oh, right? I don't know. Who was that on the phone? Rachel, just to let you know that Ian and Christian will definitely be back tomorrow. Great. It's not been the same with them two, away. Well, at least you've had a whole weekend of those having to talk about weddings. So, do you want the good news or the bad news? The bad news. I haven't managed to get hold of that book yet. And the good news? I should have it by Friday. Excellent. Anyway, um, as we're here, can I get you a drink? I think I could be tempted. You feeling any better? Yeah, much. You shouldn't have come rushing home like that, you know. I wanted to. You've got your own worries. You should be concentrating on getting that new chippy opened. It's only a fortnight away. I can't do anything till the work when I've finished. Yeah, well, make sure you save the first portion of chips for me. Hey, I might even throw in a fish if you behave yourself and stay in bed. <laughs> Doesn't look like I've got much choice. The more I move, the worse the pain seems to be. Those injections don't last as long as they did. They seem to wear off faster and faster every time. That's so stupid, isn't it? I mean, you think the doctor would be able to give you more? Hopeless, aren't they? Why is he so worried he's going to kill me off by giving me too much? It's a joke, isn't it? So tell you what, Mick. Given a choice between living a bit longer and not having to suffer that much pain, I know which I'd choose. How are you, love? Hey, I've been out in the old Moby all day. I've managed to get rid of nearly all my old trading post stock. <laughs> oh, so is that it now? Time to put your feet up and enjoy an early retirement? You're joking, aren't you? I made a mint today. Tell you. First thing in the morning, I'm down to that cash and carry and get stocked up again. Hang on. I thought you were supposed to be taking this easy. Well, driving around in a van all day is not going to kill me, is it? Anyway, you're a fine one to talk. What are you doing still working in your condition? I haven't got much choice. You're the one who should be at home with the feet up. <laughs> I wish. Seems strange around the shops without the trading post. Yeah. Got some great memories of that place. Me too. Those walls could talk, eh? Well, let's just be grateful they can't, eh? I'd better go. See you. Ta-da. You can imagine his face. I've never seen anyone so embarrassed in my entire <laughs> life. And, and this poor writer, well, he was just sitting there. Hi. Hi. Um, sorry to interrupt, but Graham called, said it was urgent. Right. Um, this is my wife, Belle. Eleanor. Very nice to meet you. And you. I hope you don't mind me having a drink with your husband. Oh, <laughs> no, not at all. Um, I hear you're representing Jackie Dixon. Yes, that's right. Terrible what happened to her. I can't believe it. Yes. Anyway, I'd better be making a move. Oh, look, please don't go on my account. I only came to deliver the message. No, I should push off anyway. Things to do. Thanks for the drink. You're welcome. I'll call you on Friday. Let you know about that book. Great. Nice to meet you. And you. Bye. Bye. Well, she's very attractive. Uh, no wonder you put so much effort in getting ready. Belle. Look, I'm only just saying. Well, I'd be glad if you keep your childish comments to yourself. You want to buy me a drink? Sorry. I've got to ring Graham, remember? Mind. Why don't you and Jimmy go to the garage? Go on, get me a pint of milk, make yourself easy. Elaine, your pass is on the phone. Coming! And don't slam the front door after you, do you? Go on, you have to make
latest issue of the Brookside magazine is now in the shops, priced £2.50. Next tonight, three very different families talk about sibling love and hate in My Sister.